Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're working on a couple of kind of random things. Aaron's already out on the tractor uh, getting ready to spread mulch. So we got another pile of bulk mulch delivered and we want to do a 15 foot perimeter around the cut flower garden. Once that's done, which I don't even think we have enough mulch to complete that, but once that's done, we're going to mulch out our pathways and in the corners so that we can really get the placement of the trees right so we can finally get those in the ground. Uh, but while he's kind of getting started, I have all of the lemon cypress here from the front sun porch. We're getting ready to do a deep clean in that room. It needs it pretty bad. The uh, windows in there are not weather tight. So every time we have a windstorm, it just gets covered in dust in, in there. And you guys know how often we get wind. So uh, I need to do some. I need to have those windows sealed somehow uh, to where that room doesn't get so gross. But the cats also go in there. The chaise lounge is kind of like their bed. Um, they're in and out. So I always like them to have a sheltered, warm spot to go if they should want that. So I figured at least until that front sun porch is cleaned up, we would just kind of arrange them in this area here because they're a little bit out of the way. They're protected here. They won't blow over. Um, and then the citrus up there have a little bit of an aphid issue, which I've always kind of struggled with in that room just on my citrus plants. So I think I might even move those out to a place where they can kind of quarantine and get them treated for that so that I can move them back in and they'll be clean. Well, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Say, hey guys, how's it going? going? <laughs> You're so good at that, buddy. Yeah. So I've got seven lemon cypress here. All of these, the six down here look pretty good. I need to do a little trimming. <laughs> I need to shape that up a little bit. The one up here doesn't look quite as good, which I mean, I kind of raked them out of some planters and window boxes this last fall and planted them up. And I didn't really expect every one of them to survive uh, because some of their root system, this might be one that the root system wasn't quite as robust, but I think it's salvageable. Like the top was really nice. I thought about trimming away the bottom stuff that's kind of browned out and creating a lollipop instead of like a tree form. And then I already have some primrose here that just need to be groomed. There's an anemone there. Benjamin has a, kind of his outdoor toys here. So I gotta figure out a way, like I wonder if I can put the stuff, like the toys inside the little box. I'm not sure. So we'll get this stuff arranged, then we'll head up and get the citrus. You found a dandelion? Yeah, it just growed up over there. In the grass? Yeah. Nice. Let me see. That's beautiful, buddy. It'll go I'll go catch it. It'll take this cancer. I'll take that. Thank you very much. What are you gonna go do? <laughs> He's chasing a moth. <laughs> Do you get a bunch of the mulch spread? Some, not a lot. <laughs> you waiting for me? No. And my I gotta, muscles? Uh, I gotta watch one of the vid tomorrow's video. Oh, you wanna show daddy what you can do? Here you go. Okay, I'll hold it. Whoa. Oh, great job, bud. Are you being careful? He's very precise with it. Like he doesn't want to just like take after it and cut it all into pieces. Like he. What's that called when you uh, cut little pieces off a, or like you have like a little tree? Bonsai. bonsai. Yeah. He might like that. He might like to work on a bonsai, buddy. Maybe we'll get you one. Pretty good. <laughs> Are you my shadow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we need to draw your hopscotch again, buddy? It's getting all faded out. Oh, I got it. You looking for it? I'll show you where it's at now. It's in here precariously with the bubbles. Let's do that one. Let's do that.
Looking good, bud. You know, I love these lemon cypress up in the front sun porch. Like when we do recap videos and the videos where I get to sit down and just chat with you guys, I love seeing those uh, that structure around me. And that's where these may end up going again, but it makes it so much easier to have stuff out of that room to clean it because it's not a huge room and I do have a lot of stuff in it. Oh, <gasps> Benjamin, are you drawing on me with chalk? No way, because you'll draw on my face. You've done it before. Hey. <laughs> so here's a little bit of an overview. I think they all trimmed up. Like, I honestly didn't even trim very many of them. Like, these three on the ground, I did not trim. Uh, that one, I trimmed a tiny... Nope, that one I didn't trim anything. This one, I trimmed a tiny bit around the base. And then, of course, these two, I'm training. So they needed quite a bit of tra uh, trimming. So this one right here, I actually started training it from a really crummy-looking tree form like this. So that's why it's still pretty like full of gaps. Um, but I thought it was like a perfect one to start this double decker shape from. And sometimes you can kind of tell, like if you look at this one right here, you can see a natural opening right in this section right here. It's just not as thick. And so that if you wanted to take this one and make it, you know, circular and then shave up this section and then make the top circular, you totally could do that. You might have kind of a weird shaped one for a season or two while it's, you know, growing and filling in. But yeah, I think it's going to be great. And then this one right here on the bottom is the one I trimmed up today, which that one will take a little bit more time. It's a single ball topiary there. We've got quite a bit of infrastructure that it's kind of nice to hide because you really see it from this angle. That's uh, Benjamin's plug-in for his lawn tractor. And then this is our vent from our <laughs> stove. Whoa, you, yeah. you have green fingers, gah. Also, as far as the rest of this area goes, we had planned on keeping the kitchen window box because this window is higher than the other ones over here. So it's kind of like a one-off. And I do really like seeing something as I walk into the kitchen door, something pretty. Uh, but we do plan on building a wraparound porch at some point. I mean, it might be five years down the road, who knows. Um, but we thought when we do that, it really is going to make it maybe feel a little bit too enclosed to have all the window boxes. If we got rid of those, it would feel a little bit more open, perhaps. So I'm not sure if we'll actually remove them this year. We had planned on doing it when the house was painted this spring, and it's almost summer now, and the house is not painted yet. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, I may end up filling them up with ferns or something like that. And I think that that would be pretty. If they were just chock full of beautiful, like, Boston ferns, they would love this location in the shade. They get a lot of movement. Um, yeah, I think that they would be really nice. Okay, so now that this little project is done, we need to head up to the front sun porch, get the citrus out, and I think what I'm gonna do is just leave them in one of the bays of the barn that I can leave the door open during the day so they get plenty of light just for a few days. Um, I think I'm gonna spray them with maybe a horticultural oil, I'm not sure, or a neem. We'll go out there and take a look at them. I'll show you kind of what I'm dealing with. They do have fruit on them right now, um, but I really do need to get them treated. Oh, I'm loving the back stairs. It's so bright and cheerful, especially with all the daffs over here. Hey dude, you ready? Let's go get the citrus plants. So here we are at the front sun porch and we're just going to clean the whole thing. The whole outside here and the whole inside. So got a couple of chairs out here. I had an arrangement of alliums, dried alliums, and they kept blowing out in the windstorm so I removed those. I need to put something potted up here. Something potted and low maintenance. So when we film videos, typically I'm sitting right here and Aaron's got a chair pulled up right out here. Um, I've got a heater I need to move to the basement because we don't need that anymore. All this debris is from our last uh, flower arrangement. I haven't made it out here even to clean that up. Isn't that horrible? Like that's the stuff that you guys don't see because usually you're just looking up and you can see the beautiful plants and all that business, but you're not looking down at all the horror <laughs> that's going on. Um, so I had lemon cypress here, here on that chair, on this bench here, and then I think I had one on the floor there. And I've got three citrus in here, a pink lemonade lemon, which is looking pretty good. Now I let things get pretty dry because I knew I was gonna move them out. So as soon as I get them into their location, I need to give them a thorough watering. But this one's looking pretty good. Um, it's got fruit on it and it is blooming right here. So it's about ready to maybe have some more fruit. And this one isn't being plagued by anything in particular. I don't notice any aphids or scale or anything like that. 
looking a little dry though. And then in this front corner, I have a lime tree, which has been amazing. It's starting to bloom again. It's looking a little scant, but it kind of goes through cycles where it's full of leaves and then it kind of drops some blooms, produces fruit and then produces more leaves. But uh, in all honesty, it did get missed a couple of times in the watering rounds. So it's had a little bit of a struggle, but no bugs. This is my bug problem right here. This is a Meyer lemon. It has produced tons and tons and tons of lemons. You can see it still has three on the plant right there. There are buds on the plant in several different locations, but I think what I'm dealing with here is a gnarly case of scale. Look at this. You can smash them pretty gross. So really what I want to do is get all three of these plants moved out of here, get them all cleaned up, watered, uh, and then the Meyer lemon treated for scale. And then we can thoroughly clean this room. All the curtains need to come down and be washed. Look at the fan. It is just covered in dust. It has been such a windy, windy spring. Like this is what happened after the last storm. See the floor right there? Like it stuff just blows in on the floor all over and all over the windowsills. Oh, and this really is in preparation for the house being painted because this whole front porch and this area are gonna be scraped and repainted as well. Um, so it'll be nice to have it deep cleaned so that nobody else is having to mess with that. <laughs> Oh my word, it does look quite a bit different with no plants in here, but here's what I'm thinking. So we take the chaise out, I'm gonna get a new lamp. I actually bought a pair of lamps like at Walmart or something when Aaron and I were very first married, and that's one of them right there. I wanna get something that's not beige. I guess I could still use the bottom, but anyway, I kinda wanna get a new lamp. Um, and then we'll move the chaise out. We'll move this really beautiful bench down the way a little bit, and I'll get a small pair of chairs to go in here, or like maybe one here and one here with an ottoman. Um, yeah, I think it would be a beautiful place to have coffee in the morning or whatever, or just hang out. And it does seem like this would be a wonderful place to do that anyway, but the chaise, it doesn't, um, it doesn't come forward, so you have to lay down. Um, it's just one of those pieces I bought at an antique store because I thought it was beautiful, and I do love it. It's really pretty. I think it would look gorgeous like out in the middle of the lawn somewhere, and maybe we'll do that. I don't know. It's wood and fabric, though, so it's like, well, if you have a tour of your garden, maybe you throw it out <laughs> onto the grass, kind of make this little beautiful setting, uh, but it's not something that you would probably want to keep out, out, uh, you know, under out from undercover. Anyway, it's just kind of a shame because I do love the way it looks in here and it's a pretty piece, but it's just not super functional for what I want to use this space for. All right, so let's head to the barn with our citrus. we're gonna have shade for just a second. Oh, <laughs> by a second, I mean a, literally a second. Okay, so this is where they're gonna stay for a little while, just so that at least this one has a chance to recuperate from the scale. Um, I have them on the saucer, so they're easy to kind of uh, scoot around on the ground. So we'll scoot them out into the sun during the day, and then if it gets too chilly, we can scoot them into the barn and shut the door, and they should be protected. It's not getting super cold anymore. I mean, like high 30s, 40s at the lowest, so. They should be okay, especially because that front room that they were in is not heated. Um, unless I run the heater, which I only do if it gets like in the teens. And now that I have these outside, there's really not a whole lot I need to do in terms of grooming. Uh, because like even these branches that don't seem to have any leaves have buds all over them, which will turn into fruit. Um, the lime, like I said, I think I'm going to, I'm gonna take the fruit off because it's dropping them anyway. It's yellowing and dropping. So the tree is not super happy. Um, I think the setting of the fruit and trying to ripen it takes a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, so now that the tree doesn't have to worry about that, it can focus on uh, its new fruit and then also producing more leaves. Okay, so on this Meyer lemon here, we're getting close. You can see what the scale looks like. It's soft brown scale. It's pretty disgusting. 
Um, so it's on a lot of the branches, but also on the backs of some of the leaves. You find a good example of that. Yeah, so you can see them kind of lining along the vein on the bottom of the leaf right there. And you can squish them, which I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just kind of um, cleaning up the worst of this because I can kill a lot of them just by hand, which I know that probably grosses some of you guys out. <laughs> but I'm so used to it. Anyway, um, so I will kind of clean up the plant as best as I can. And then I'm gonna come in with this right here. This is an all seasons horticultural spray oil. Um, the active ingredient is a mineral oil. It is for organic um, and you can use it on citrus trees. In fact, it is labeled on the back for citrus. You can see right here all the citrus that it labels as well as the uh, things that it controls, uh, scales included, timing, summer spray only, which I keep my trees in kind of a perpetual state of summer. They're always kind of in, in some sort of bloom or fruit, it seems like. Um, the only thing it says to do is just not to spray it when they're wilting, which my... Uh, lemon tree is not wilting so I think we're okay there. Whew, let me move into the shade for a second. That sun is starting to get warm. So basically what this does, the horticultural oil, is it um, envelops and smothers insects and their eggs. I feel like it's a really gentle way, like a good way to start um, with an insect problem. Start with the most gentle method that you can and then bump up from there if you have to, but oftentimes you don't have to. Um, hopefully you're looking at your plants often enough to where you don't have a full-blown issue like I have going on here. Like that's the most ideal thing. Um, but this is labeled, you know, for organic gardening. And then also it says you can use it up to the day of harvest. So I feel like it's a really safe thing to be using. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna clean up this lemon as best I can, get as many of the insects that I can see off of it. And then we're just gonna spray it down with this oil. I'm gonna move it into the shade. I'm not gonna let it sit out in the sun with the oil on it. Um, and then I'm gonna water these in and they're gonna probably love their life after that. Check that out. That's all the scale right there that came off these plants. Isn't that disgusting? Oh, I did decide to hit them with a little citrus tone while I was at it. So they've been sprayed down with the all seasons. They were given fertilizer and they've been thoroughly watered in. In fact, you can tell right here that this one's been watered. I think we broke the saucer. <laughs> When, I think when I set this one down, it broke. And these plants will be so much happier. Most plants are when you get them out of an inside situation because they're not native to inside. They're native to an outside situation somewhere in the world. And while citrus isn't native to my area and you have to bring them in for the winter time, they always kind of struggle a bit before you can put them back out once the temperatures are warm enough. But I think they'll like it in this position, at least for the next couple of weeks when I have them here in quarantine when they're not around anything else. So I sprayed them today, they'll get sprayed again in a week. So after two weeks, so two different sprays, uh, I will thoroughly check the plants over before we decide to move them anywhere else. But being on the south side of this building where uh, it's very bright, even if they're not like pushed out into the full sun, which will probably drag them out in the morning and kind of protect them in the afternoon, They'll still receive a lot of bright light, a lot of air movement, and I think they'll be really happy. And all three of these citrus plants have been with me for a really long time, so I really want to keep them around. All right, so I just got to put my hose away. Got my kind of gross chore for the day done with all that scale. Now I'm going to move on to the uh, tiring chore of the day, which is spreading mulch. It's going to look good, though. I love not having to coil up a hose. So awesome. Also, before we go back out, I just have to show you this grouping of containers. We have more blooms than we did the other day. And this one, along with the Delnus Hot, this is called Bella Estrella or Bella Estrella. I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce that, but I love this daffodil so much. It's got a ruffly center and it's just really softly colored. I love it, especially with the Sensatia Lemon Nemesia down below it. It's been a really fun one to watch, kind of come into its own a bit. Okay, I better grab a rake. I'm not sure if Aaron did. We usually have two rakes right here, so I'm guessing he already has one. We'll take this one just in case. Here he comes. The last windstorm knocked this obelisk out of this container. 
which is crazy, it is so heavy. So our goal for today is just to get as much of the perimeter around the cut flower garden mulched. You can see the interior is done. And um, Paul came out here and marked 15 foot walkways all the way around the perimeter. So this is the area. It really has helped mulch like for weeds and stuff yeah. on the interior yeah. and it helps with dust. Like during windstorms, I see just dust billowing out here, but right here, nothing, which is so nice. I'm excited for when we get to put grass in though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should probably do a little bit more right in here too. It's kind of feathered out. Yeah. You wanna put this on? Yes, please. Also, you guys, just real quick, I've got some action out here with some seedlings. Also some weeds, but you see all this? I've got a lot going on in here that I just didn't even, like stuff is just coming up. This is the Albion Black Nigella right in here. I can't even believe it. So a few of the things I'm still not seeing any action, but at least there's some, there's some flowers coming up. All right, project number one, check. <laughs> Where do you want to start spreading? I already spread a little bit of mulch over there. Oh, in front of the orchard? Yeah. Okay, so here's the mulch pile, and it looks like, swing around here, Aaron's already got some piles up there. You said the rake's up there. And in most cases, I would rather be on the backside of a rake than in the tractor. Those of you who have seen my tractor skills can understand why. Oh, my word. Oh, I'm so sorry, neighbors. Huh. And that right there is what we've been dealing with this spring. <sighs> I've told Aaron more than once that I kind of want to move. <laughs> to finish right in front of the orchard and then from right where the gravel starts to go back behind the orchard fence we got this 15 foot walkway done <laughs> Benjamin came out to help not all the way to the end but close how much further do you think we can go with the mulch that we have left Aaron not much. I'll need to I'll need to rake it into the bucket uh-huh because at a certain point you can't, you can't you're totally trying to repeat us yeah are you being a copycat yeah, is that fun? <laughs> I think in order to finish the perimeter, we're gonna need at least one to two more loads of mulch. And then we've got walkways to do. We gotta figure out what we wanna do with that. But the benefit of doing this right now is that I can tell it's keeping the powdery level 
level layer of dirt down. Um, so the more of this that we do, like every rake stroke I was making today, I'm like, oh, covering the powder, covering it up, which is kind of satisfying. So anyway, I think we're gonna call it a day with that because it is starting to get a little bit breezier. It kind of died down for a second now, which is nice, but it was just blowing really, really hard. Um, so, and I'm kind of spent. Are you spent? Lots of hard tractor work for you today. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yep, there's the wind, here it comes. And we will see you in the next one, bye.